So now we come to the exciting bit where we use the dusts. Now, the dusts I've got in front of me, I will run through the brand and the colour for you. However, whatever dust you like working with, as long as it's a food grade edible dust, that's the important thing. Just use the one that you like best of all, or colour matches the flower or the rose you're making. In front of me, I've got Squire's Kitchen Fern Green. I've got Sugar Fair Foliage Green. I've got Sugar Flare Plum and I've got Squire's Kitchen Edelweiss. So those are the four colours I'm using. Now to start off, I'm going to take a little bit of my vine green, put it on my brush, almost take as much off as I put on, and I'm going to go in and I'm just going to put a little bit of green at the base of the petals where they protrude from the calyx. The reason for that is if you look at a rose, usually you'll find the base of the petal has a touch of green on it. Okay, the next thing I like to do for myself is I just like to put a little stripe of vine green or fern green down the center of each petal, um, each calyx. The reason for that is if I do it all in one color, I find it looks really flat. So I've just put some random color into there. I'm then going to take the foliage green, which is the darker one, and I'm going to work it into the hip, which is the base of the calyx, or calyx as some of my friends would call it. I never know what the right pronunciation is, but I call it a calyx. And then I'm going to work that up on top of the spikes of the calyx. Now, you will note the back of your rose has suddenly become messy. That's the reason I like having a completely dry rose, because if I go with my posh puffer, remember this one, um, it blows the excess dust off, therefore I don't have it staining the rest of my rose. So turning over now to my rose itself, I'm going to load up my paintbrush, just a flat paintbrush, and I'm going to come across the top edges of these petals. I'm just catching little bits of it at the moment. I do tend to spend a long time dusting because I like, like doing that process. But to start with, I actually make my rose look quite messy. So, by catching the edge of the petals, you'll end up giving them some definition. They'll stand out more. Now, if you wanted to work quicker, I mean, I'm using a totally dry rose here, so I know that any fallout dust I can blow back off with my puffer. However, if you were working with this rose when it was fresh and leathery, if you have any fallout on your rose, it's likely to stay in place because the moisture in the gum paste will want to attract it. So I need to just look at my rose for a second. Now, once I've got pretty much the edges caught, I'll drag that color down inside the petals. I tend to be very much someone who dabs colour on. I'm not one of these people who spends a very long time being picky about where the dust goes. Unless I'm doing a very specific flower that has very much specified shading. So I'll give it a bit of dust. And then the other thing you need to remember is, don't forget the back. The back of the petals should also have color on them. So again, I go in, I give it a bit of dust. Now, as I said at the beginning of this lesson, I'm dusting the colour on this. If I wanted to work a lot quicker, what I would normally have done is I would have started with a darker ball of pink paste for the centre of my rose, and then every set of three petals I rolled out and cut, I would have added more white and white to it, so therefore you get natural shading throughout the rose, which means commercially you've cut out this entire stage that will speed things up and increase your profit margin. So I've done those, just want to have a quick look face on 
I'm just going to put a little bit darker into the centre. As you can see there, I've just added more colour into the middle because where the petals are all tightly wrapped, that's where the majority of the density of colour would be. Then what I like to do is I'll go in and I've got my Edelweiss, my white, and I'll go in and I'll just put patches of white in there just to paint in the highlights. Now this isn't a necessary stage, I just find for me, I find I get a little added subtleties into my rose this way. Obviously if you'd over coloured your rose, this would be one way that you could lighten it back a little bit. very important to look at your rose head on. If you look at your rose head on, you can actually then see where the colour needs to be. Like I can see there's a patch there that is blaringly obvious that I've missed the colour from it. But just for that touch, I just put it back in. So I think that's possibly it. Um, I would always say stop before you think you're done, because if you keep on going, your rose will get darker and darker and darker. I'm going to pull these dusts out of the way in a second. I'm going to take my puffer and I'm going to puff into the centre of this. Now, any loose dust in there, because my rose is completely dry, will blow away. Now, don't judge your rose at this point, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to steam it. Now, for those of you who are going to email me and ask me what this is, this is actually a small portable clothes steamer by a company called Quest. So you can do this with the steam of a kettle, obviously. So wait till the steam starts coming out of this. The reason you steam something is because you want to secure the dust to the gum paste. If you don't steam it, you are more than likely to have fallout onto your cake. So I'm just going to run that through the steam a little bit. Because my rose is completely dry, I'm not in danger. If your petals are too thin, don't do it too much or your petals will all start to flop. Take that out of the way there. So there you go, that's brought my rose to life. Now obviously at this stage I won't stand it upside down on my foam pad because if I did that, this would all be sticky and it will pull the colour off. So in the next chapter we're just going to put the leaf onto it and then we're going to see what it looks like as a topper for a cake.